Is it coming? There we go. Thank you. Chairman Cardin, I just want to thank you for your remarks. And, and Senator Shaheen, the J-1 issue is also a big issue in my state as well. And I echo your concern and appreciate the fact that, Ms. Satterfield, you, we will be willing to work with us on this if confirmed. Uh, if I could first turn to Ambassador Gifford. Chief of Protocol plays a critical diplomatic role. You'll be charged with advising not only on national but international diplomatic protocols. Our nation will rely upon you. As the former United States Ambassador to Japan, I understand how difficult sometimes the nuances of diplomatic protocol can be. And it, it will be requiring you to have very keen judgment as you execute your duties if you're confirmed. Also, I want to remind you that if confirmed, you'll be representing all Americans. And I hope that you'll keep that in mind. And with that in mind, I'd like to understand your views, Ambassador, on the importance of bipartisanship in the execution and implementation of U.S. foreign policy and whether you'll commit to work with me and the other members of this committee to make sure that bipartisan representation is, is critically represented in all of our diplomatic protocol issues. Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, the answer to that is absolutely 100% as someone like you who has served overseas and has seen the, the real beauty and strength and power of American, um, American diplomacy globally. As far as I'm concerned, partisan politics has absolutely no place uh, at the State Department. Uh, I, what was it, that uh, politics famously stops at the water's edge. Um, and then, of course, uh, when we're living and working uh, at the State Department, that holds true as well. The way I think about this is when we, if I am confirmed, and I am privileged enough to take that oath of office, I pledge to serve, protect, defend the Constitution of the United States. I don't, uh, no president, no ideology, certainly no political party. Um, and for me, I think I have a record to back that up uh, because that is what I did from 2013 until, uh, until I left uh, my post in 2017. And I commit to you wholeheartedly to do that once again if I'm confirmed in this position. I appreciate that, Ambassador. I've been very frustrated myself seeing former diplomats come back and behave in a partisan manner. And I think that that needs to be parked. And just as you say, you'll be representing all of us. And I appreciate your wholehearted focus on that. Ambassador Coleman, if I could turn to you, please. Um, I've enjoyed our opportunity to discuss uh, matters related to the charter that uh, you're, you're looking to undertake. I'd like to talk with you about two areas, China and Afghanistan. Uh, USAID funds uh, a, a, a tremendous amount of effort to help ethnic Tibetans to maintain their culture, uh, to maintain their entrepreneurial presence. It's this type of program that I wholeheartedly support. And I'd love to hear your views on how you would look at continuing USAID's support for other groups that may be in some way uh, oppressed or in, in damaged in some manner by China's malign behavior. Thank you, Senator Haggerty, for that question. And I thank you for your time last week. Uh, that we were able to spend to get to know each other a bit. Um, it's a very important question. We have seen an increasing authoritarian turn in China and an erosion of human rights in that country. You mentioned the Tibetans, but of course, um, the situation with the Uyghurs is, um, is very dire too. Um, USAID is um, doing what it can to support uh, the Uyghur people, um, particularly those who are um, taking an activist role um, and those who have been um, oppressed by the country. Um, some of them and, uh, have, have left the country and uh, USAID is taking efforts across China um, to uh, uh, ensure um, human rights programming um, where it can, but often uh, outside the country. I hope we can continue this conversation, particularly with the thought of how we can prevent the CCP from diverting or in some way frustrating those efforts. I'll look forward to having those conversations with you should you be confirmed. I look uh, forward to it. With respect to Afghanistan, um, I see a very challenging role there because we're making commitments to continue U.S. aid, but the Taliban has taken over half of the districts there, putting our presence there under tremendous pressure. Have you had the opportunity to think about how you will deploy USAID uh, resources under the current conditions in Afghanistan, particularly as you see them trending? Thank you, Senator, for that question, too. I have, um, I have spent a bit of time in Afghanistan. I've been there maybe half a dozen times over the past 20 years and um, have seen some very good work that USAID has done there. And I recognize that 
um, the situation is, is very fragile right now and, and rapidly changing. Um, I think USAID has made some strong gains in Afghanistan and will do what it can, both through our own efforts on the ground, um, but also working through partners there, um, local partners, um, international NGOs, and uh, UN agencies to continue some of the good work that we have done. But if confirmed, um, I will certainly make Afghanistan a priority and to do contingency planning as the situation evolves. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.